Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lance, and I'm here to give you a new music review. Calvin Harris has dropped his newest record called Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1. Yes, yeah, Volume 1, so I guess it's going to be multiple albums, who knows? Um, yeah, this seems to be like a little bit of like a funky album for him. I thought it was a very entertaining album off the bat. Um, I listened to it straight the first time, and it was just like, okay, like, you know, this is actually really cool. Like, it's the songs that I can dance to, sounds that I can move to. It has some great features on the track. You got features from Frank Ocean to the Migos to Kalani, Lil Yachty. Uh, even Snoop Dogg is on, this, uh, is on this album. So it's like one of those things in which he got a lot of collaborators. And Calvin Harris, I think, really did his thing with this album. First album on the record is Slide, featuring Frank Ocean and the Migos. This song uh, was actually a single that actually premiered months ago. I forget what, what month it was, but when it first came out, I absolutely loved it. Um, and I still love it to this day. I think that this song has a lot of longevity. Um, the flow, the rhythm, the charisma, I feel like all three of these artists on this track are just working in a cohesive unit. Uh, Frank Ocean is just doing what he does best, and Amigos, they've done some great work as of late, and I think this is one of the best works that they have done yet. They really work well off of each other, I think this is a great opener to this album. Calvin Harris really shows his talent. Um, I believe there was a video on his Twitter showing how he made the beats to this, and I was very impressed by how he was able to do it. I just really adore this track, honestly. I think it's probably one of, one of, if not the best, track on the album. Alright, the second song on the album, I believe, is called Cash Out. It's featuring Schoolboy Q, Party Next Door, and Dram. I really did not mind this track. It was actually pretty decent. Um, there's a couple of things. I really admired the funky beat. Uh, it has some really good really good production, it's really outgoing, really out there. Uh, I believe it was a good follow-up to Slide. However, I just feel like, you know, out of all of these people that are on this track, Party Next Door undoubtedly is probably uh, the one that I could probably do without. I feel like Schoolboy Q really brings uh, his A-game and I really feel like Dram towards the end of the song tries to save it, but like towards the middle it's kind of like Party Next Door is kind of giving like these lazy uh, phrases, these lasers, uh, these lazy chorus beats, these hooks, and I was just like not into it too much, honestly. I just didn't think that it held it really much together towards the middle. And then Dram comes out of nowhere towards the end and just believes him like, like he gives us some killer vocals. He really does a good job in trying to save it and just trying to like keep this thing together and still making it out to be like a pretty decent to solid uh, uh, track. Um, so not a bad track at all, um, but it could have been way better, honestly, in my opinion. Alright, so the third track on the album is called Heat Stroke, featuring Young Thug and Ariana Grande. And I believe that Young Thug really does a really good job. Another funky dance beat has really good production as well. Ariana Grande, I feel like, has one of the best features on this album. She's like a really good talented singer, and it ends well. Alright, the fourth song on this album is called Rollin', featuring... Khaled and Future. Uh, Khaled is a young up-and-coming artist who I really adore. I loved his uh, Teenage Dream album even though like it had its, its flaws. It has a lot of filler songs. However, there are some good songs in there such as Location and 18 and Young Dumb and Broke. He just provides these nice soothing vocals that really complement Roland along with Future's presence. He's always an asset. Future is always, to my, in my opinion, always an asset to any song he's on, even in pop. I feel like he's almost like the best thing about the song. You know, the production, I love it. I really love this production. Uh, you know, it just comes off really good. Uh, the thing is, is that also, is that one critique about the song is that even though how much I love Khaled, Khaled kind of gets a little re repetitive with the chorus. Um, I understand it's the chorus, and I'm not knocking that, of course, it's the chorus. However, I just feel like, I think the structure of the song really, really fails towards the, towards the middle. I feel like... There could have been something to really change it up towards the middle to keep this from becoming just a solid track. It could have become a great track, but I just feel like there was something there that just needed to be done. Uh, Khaled's chorus was becoming repeated, and I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, I could dance to this. I can groove to this. However, it's just like you're keeping it from becoming gold, and right now it's silver. The next song on this track list is Prayers Up, featuring A-Track and Travis Scott. Now... I think this is actually the most forgettable song on this album. I think it's more of like a strip club song. Uh, there's some good stuff in there by Travis Scott. Travis Scott is always great. You know, I don't think that he's bad at all. I really enjoy his music. 
uh, a track not too familiar with myself however uh, I didn't sound too bad I just feel like this song is a little bit forgettable I think where it's placed in this row of songs or this just track listing it's just like out of place I feel like it probably should have been towards like the end rather than the middle I just feel like it's something just there as a filler um, I think that's just how it is in my opinion um, I'm not I didn't really necessarily love the production on this track uh, it didn't really grab me as much as some of the other songs did and uh, I think it's probably the second weakest song on the album in my opinion. Now the next song on this track is called Holiday uh, featuring Snoop Dogg and John Legend as well as Takeoff. So Snoop Dogg, Takeoff, John Legend. Let me tell you something. Snoop Dogg gives some really refreshing vocals. Haven't heard him in a song for a while. He was really good in this. I really liked how he opened it, really worked well with the production. Uh, Takeoff also was great. I feel like he brings this old school vibe to it. They kind of feed off of each other, him and him and uh, Snoop Dogg. And then obviously John Legend with the vocals. Come on, you can't beat it. I just think that he's great. And uh, he actually does a good job of complimenting it. However, I just don't feel like it was anything out of the ordinary uh, from you know him just being his usual self. And you know, you just understand that's wow John Legend is amazing and while both of these all of these artists are great uh, it just comes off I guess maybe becoming something nothing out of the ordinary uh, nothing crazy uh, the most surprising thing is probably like you know just hearing Snoop Dogg coming out of nowhere for the first time in the out in, in the track and then it's like okay we get a track and then it kind of becomes a little bit more of that usual sounding funk sound that we've been hearing earlier on in the album and that's only my kind of a critique about it it's just that song is kind of like you know weighing it's like on the cusp of just being average now I we get to probably my least favorite song on the track um it's skirt on me featuring Nicki Minaj unfortunately it is my weakest pick of this of the of the whole record uh, I think it is because of the fact that I just feel like she's trying too hard to be this pop reggae mixture of a person in this track and I just really didn't think that it worked for me I personally feel like it kind of reminded me of Drake and right now I don't want to be reminded of Drake after that playlist that he premiered a couple of months ago to think that she should just be a little bit more of that hardcore rap I feel like that's where she's at her best I mean just look at the verse on Monster it kind of like almost made her career so I just think like this towards the end of the track she kind of gets back into that old school rap hardcore uh, Lil Kimish style that she kind of always embodied and I feel like that saves this track from becoming a disaster in my opinion obviously there's people that like to pop vocals there's people that admire that however I just didn't you know I don't like to hear that from Nicki I like to hear that from somebody else but maybe not Nicki I just think that it was uh, kind of a little bit of a failure um, but towards the end of the song it does get a little bit better so I suggest that if you listen to this song and you just want to hear her rap you probably should skip over to the ending because that's where you're going to hear like the good stuff in my opinion the production is also not that good in my opinion I feel like the pop just kind of like overwhelms it uh, it becomes a little bit less funky and a little bit more popish and I don't think that's uh, maybe not the goal but maybe just like not necessarily what I was hoping for now we get to the next song on this track, Feels, featuring Katy Perry, Pharrell, and Big Sean. Alright, I like everything about this song besides Katy Perry. Her, her voice on this song is a little bit cringe. I felt Pharrell. Pharrell was great. Um, you, could, you could really sense the passion behind the voice and the charisma. And then Big Sean actually wasn't bad either. I'm not the biggest fan of him. just don't think he's a really good performer. However, he does bring a little bit more... Uh, uh, likeability. Just like unfortunately I just think it's one of the more weaker projects on the album. I just didn't uh, resonate with it as much as some of the other songs on this so I just didn't think that it was just that good. Uh, not saying I could do without it, I think it stands on its own but I just didn't think that it was just that good. Alright so we got Faking It featuring both Kalani and Lil Yachty. This in my opinion is probably the second best song on the album. I feel like Kalani, her vocals are just great and I just think that she's so talented and she really brings it with the song. And Lil Yachty, 
you know, I'm not the biggest fan of him. However, I, just, I do think that he does a really good job with his lyrics. I do think that he does a really good job with his delivery. And I think that uh, they both complement each other in great ways. Along with the instrumental, I just think that the production is really good. Calvin Harris just does a great job in in taking these two collaborators and just putting them, two young up-and-coming artists of their respective genres, one being more of an R&B singer, the other one being more of a rapper, a new wave rapper, and who's faced a lot of criticism, both have for like different things. However, I just think that them being in this uh, song together really did a lot of great things, in my opinion. I feel like it was actually a really solid entry, and I think it's probably the second best song on the entire album. Now we get to the last song of the entire Calvin Harris album. We got Hard to Love featuring Jesse Reyes. This song kind of reminds me of a sunset, uh, purple, orange, red skies, uh, just that yellow on the surface. I think Jesse Reyes does a good job here. Um, uh, I think, you know, for, for an album closer I think it works but I think in the grand scheme of things it kind of feels a little off place compared to the rest of the album it kind of is a little bit too distinctive it doesn't really feature a funky beat like the other songs or most of the other songs uh, it's a little bit less electronic a little bit more acoustic um, Jesse Reyes I haven't heard a lot from her so I can't really judge but I think that you know she does a decent job here and uh, yeah, and uh, it's a pretty decent entry, not bad at all. Um, overall, this album was pretty, pretty solid. It was good. It was good. I, I enjoyed myself. Like, I can definitely see myself listening to this again like a month from now. But like beyond that, I'm not too sure. I could definitely dance to it in like the club. Like, definitely. Like, I can definitely do that. Um, but um, yeah, uh, it's just one of those albums in which has a couple of gems or actually a few good gems a few misses like maybe two and just like a couple of other mediocre songs so I just think that that's kind of what I got out of it definitely give it like a B minus to a B um, I think that it was pretty solid I would definitely listen to it to, again I've listened to it three times already um, and yeah, it's not bad and it's a really good entry from Calvin Harris and I can't wait to see what he does next after this because hopefully, I think he's just getting better. You know what I mean? He's made a couple of good singles before this and honestly, like I feel like this is his first really good body of work and uh, or really decent body of work as I might say. And uh, yeah, I'm, I was kind of satisfied with it. So anyway, that's my review for Calvin Harris's Funk Wave Bounces Volume 1. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.